Hello and welcome back to the ranch. Um, today I wanted to talk about the sand wash basin roundup and roundups in general that are currently going on and will keep going on. Um, this one really hit home for me because it did happen in Colorado and I'm a former Colorado resident. It also happened in the sand wash basin and I had been following sand wash basin horses for years uh, seeing all the pictures and just following that herd in general and just in awe of the majesty of those those incredible horses um, now the BLM did do the roundup and the roundup is the correct term Gathering, as they call it, gathering is generally voluntary. People gather for special occasions. Roundup is the correct term because none of these horses volunteered to uh, gather. So, but who's ultimately responsible for these roundups occurring? And uh, it's all of us every single one of us. Our population, our cities, towns, highways, fences, everything. We have these horses reduced to living on public lands and within those public lands they live in what's called an HMA, a herd management area, which is typically a smaller area within the public lands. So we are all responsible for this and we all need to accept that and hold ourselves accountable for that. With that being said, we do need to hold the BLM accountable for, first off, their own documents on care, treatment, how things are conducted. And we need to speak out when we see things that we don't like and would like to change. These are public lands. The BLM is a federally funded uh, department. We're all taxpayers. We have the right to voice our opinions and ask our public officials to step in and make changes that need to be uh, implemented. Now the Roundup was declared an emergency on the BLM website. So that was the first thing to come under fire was whether or not this was actually an emergency. And um, turns out the BLM does have a main document about the gathering as they call it. It's a 240 page document. It does not declare the Roundup as an emergency anywhere within the document. However, it does cite many times what can be done or what they need to do in the event of an emergency. So my fear is that by them declaring it emergency on their website, but not within the document, that they are now entitled to go ahead with whatever it is they say needs to happen in the event of an emergency. Um, so the first thing I would like to see changed is if a roundup is going to be an emergency, then they must state that in their main document. You cannot come up with the main document and then later on decide uh, this is an emergency, so we're, we're, we're free to do whatever it is we need to do. That, that can't happen. They need to declare that and they need to substantiate it with facts and data that everyone can see. Um, I prepared my own document after doing extensive reading and it was my attempt to turn my anger about this whole episode into something productive. And I encourage everybody to read it. I'll put it in the description. If it's something that you believe in as well, then I encourage you to copy it, um, get it to your governor, get it to your congress congressman, 
your senators. Uh, it is also intended to the BLM administration, so send it to them as well. Make your voice heard. You are a taxpayer. This is your right. And quite honestly, it's our responsibility. When we see things happening that we don't want to see happening or things that need to change, it is our responsibility to speak up. So real quick on the Sandwash Basin Roundup. Um, there was anger about the emergency status of it. There was anger about how the horses were being treated. There was a lot of anger around many facets of the Roundup in general. And like I said, this one really gutted me. And what we can't have is the continued threats that people are making. Please stop making threats. Try to turn your anger into something more productive. Get it to your elected officials. If you continue with threats, the BLM is going to be able to say for the safety and security of their pilots and people on the ground, there will be no more public observation. Now the treatment of these horses is bad enough while these people are being observed, we can't risk what they're going to do if these horses are, if it's not observed. In the document that I wrote up, um, I have a lot of links to actual BLM documents. Um, take a look through them. All BLM documents, as far as I can tell, are available for public. You can go to their website, you can do a search. Uh, and find something that you're looking for. Like you could search for horse burrow euthanasia and see what documents that they have. Um, currently there is a document under scrutiny that broadens their use of euthanasia. Look through that document. Look through whatever, whatever document you want to, to look at. Pull it apart. See what needs to be changed. Do something productive and notify your elected officials citing this is what I want to see changed and this is what I would like to see it changed to. Okay, since we're all basically responsible for these roundups happening due to the Mustangs being limited to these very small areas, these roundups are going to continue um, and mainly for two reasons. The HMAs, where these horses live, require uh, genetic diversity. These horses are no longer free to roam the country and get genetic diversity on their own. We are going to have to move horses from one HMA to another in order to sustain their diversity and ensure you know, future generations of Mustangs. The second reason is overpopulation. Now, the BLM has what they call an AML. It is a appropriate management level. And it's the population of horses within the HMA that that small ecosystem can support. Now, when it comes to managing an ecosystem, that is an incredible daunting task. Humans don't we don't do well trying to replicate nature. And with all the science that they can get, um, and the BLM does have very good ecologists. In fact, one of them stayed here at the ranch and spoke with us. These are qualified individuals. And they will be the first ones to tell you that it all, all boils down to a best guess. Now the best guess for the Sandwash Basin was between about 160 to 360 horses. At the time of the roundup in 2021, there were almost 900. Now, I would much rather see 360 healthy, thriving horses than 900 horses that are struggling for food and water. However, this was not the case in 2021. Um, that area is 
photographed and videoed pretty extensively by private individuals uh, if there were any emancipated horses we would know and uh, that was not the case so whether or not that HMA can sustain 900 I couldn't tell you but I can tell you that I would rather see a limited number of healthy horses carrying the generations on than an overpopulated area where the horses are struggling. So what can we do better? Well first, we need to hold the BLM accountable to their own words. They have documents for everything. We can take a look at their actions and see where they are not holding true to their own words. It is not unreasonable for us as taxpayers and citizens to say, you're violating your own rules. You need to be held accountable. Now, the first thing that should be done is take a look at uh, private rancher grazing. Currently, ranchers, ranchers uh, lease land uh, on public land for their livestock to graze on. So I say do away with that. Just simply do away with it. Um, if you're a rancher, you are a businessman. Buy hay, buy feed. Um, other ranchers who don't have access to public lands, they're buying all of their feed and hay. And I would imagine there is some kind of price gouging or competition inequality with ranchers who do get to graze on public lands and it's pretty cheap. So do away with that. That would also eliminate the controversy uh, about the BLM being paid off by the, the livestock industry. Uh, right now that seems to be a biggie. Everybody's convinced um, that the BLM is getting paid off or you know, somehow making money for themselves uh, from the livestock industry. So stop grazing on public lands. Taxpayers are already buying the end product. Why do we need to fund that industry further? You're a business, take care of your own business. Now prior to these roundups happening, um, and it's pretty well known that Sandwash Basin was not actually an emergency, so they could have taken a little bit more time. Um, get a hold of sanctuaries. The BLM clearly states that they work with uh, local groups, they work with the citizens, they have volunteer programs, they, they talk to people. So get a hold of sanctuaries. Get a hold of rescues, get a hold of Mustang trainers, find out who has room and how much. How many horses can they take? Have a destination for these horses before you round them up, please. If they do work with the local groups, uh, they could have been working with the sandwashbasin.com people, the SWAT people. And I believe they did to an extent. Um, however, I believe their interactions were not entirely productive uh, or didn't end up in anyone's real favor. But the Sandwash Basin was photographed and videoed very extensively. You can identify bands of horses. So when you do these roundups, you can separate out bands, keep bands together. And a band is a a family of horses. You can keep them together and get them to a sanctuary intact. Foals, they need to stay with their natal band. Use, use the photographs and videos that everyone's taking and keep them together. Now the horses that go round up and don't make it to sanctuaries or rescues uh, are put up for adoption. Uh, I'm really on the fence about adoption. Uh, unfortunately, 
For better or worse, we, we have an, the BLM offers an adoption incentive of about a thousand dollars. So you go and adopt a horse, uh, you meet their two criteria over a course of, I believe it's 60 days, uh, maybe 120 days, uh, you get yourself a thousand dollars. Okay. That's being used by the slaughter industry as income. Um, there's been a number of investigations that have proven that. So for better or worse, we need to stop the incentive. So that will, that will help stop Mustangs from going into the slaughter business. Now the BLM does on their website give a number for you to call if you know and can photograph a wild Mustang who is untitled and being sold to slaughter. Once you get this $1,000 incentive, like I said, there's two parts. By the second part, that horse is now titled, so it can be sold to slaughter. In order to stop Mustangs from going to slaughter at all, we have to find out how much horses are being sold for in the slaughter industry make the adoption fee the equal of what they're being sold for. So without the incentive and the sale matching the adoption, you will end Mustangs from being sold to slaughter. Uh, the last thing I'd like to hit on is uh, the treatment of these horses. Now, I've seen a number of videos and there was one video uh, I believe it was actually at Sandwash Basin. Uh, you had three people harassing this horse with white flags. Uh, well, they're not doing any physical harm to the horse. However, they were tormenting and stressing out the horse. Now, watching this, here they are smacking the horse in the head with these flags. So, this mistreatment is actually due to lack of training and experience. Now the BLM does require that these people complete annually online training. Any horse trainer, even myself, you know, I'll tell you online is inadequate, horribly inadequate. Um, I personally watched all kinds of YouTube videos and it's a great way to get ideas However, you're not going to accomplish anything by taking a YouTube video and trying it out on a horse. So, the online training is inadequate. The BLM does have an extensive volunteer program. Is the BLM taking advantage of horse and mustang trainers that may be volunteering their skills to teach people who are on the ground at these roundups how to properly move a horse? Now these three people that were waving these, you know, smacking a horse with these white flags, they're gonna smack them in the head. And that's in front of the drive line. That was the first thing I noticed. I'm like, you're actually telling this horse to stop or move back. You want him to move forward. So you go to the rear. You get behind the drive line. So a lot of this mistreatment is simple training. Now there is also the you know, people that just aren't nice, to put it simply. And those people will need to be held accountable. They will need to be arrested and prosecuted if they are mistreating an animal. There are federal and state laws on animal treatment. Those laws will need to be enforced. Uh, there's also a video of a helicopter pilot he got so close to the horse that he was bumping the horse with his skid of the helicopter. Um, we had better make sure that the BLM has a document that clearly states how far a helicopter has to be from a horse. Now that pilot, since he was close enough to actually bump the horse, he needs to be held accountable and have his pilot's license revoked. He should never be flying again. None of these helicopters should be within 
200, 300 feet of the horses. Horses are incredibly sensitive animals. They will swat a fly that lands on their back. You don't need much pressure to move them. A helicopter 500 feet away is going to get them moving. So we need to hold everybody accountable for this because if these roundups are going to persist, and they will persist probably forever until these animals are once again you know, able to roam freely around the country, we're going to have these roundups and we have to do them better. We have to do them with the best interest of the horse in mind and we have to care. So take a look at the document that I, I put in the description. Um, do your own searching, but above all, voice yourself with your elected officials. Write the governor, write your congressman, write your senators, write the BLM. Don't let anyone think you're not paying attention. And if you have something to say, don't keep it around the water cooler or the kitchen or your living room. Let them know. It's how we can get things done. And it's how we let these people know we are paying attention and we do care. So, have a great day.